In this video, I'll go over the process of building a data visualization display using a Raspberry Pi 4 and a touchscreen display. As usual, I'll go over the hardware assembly process step by step. I'll then move on to explaining the software that we're going to need for setting up what we want to display. As an example, I'll be using the data reported by the World Health Organization as to the number of cases reported for a current global epidemic. This will show how to use an API to query the data, store it locally, and then have it display using the Google Charts API on the Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. They're currently offering a free PCB prototype with your first order. The ordering process in their website is pretty straightforward. They offer a wide variety of options for manufacturing your PCBs, as well as short lead times and very fast shipping. Now, when you log in, you're able to accumulate reward points that you can use to get discounted or free products. With outstanding manufacturing capabilities and the excellent products that result, I highly recommend NextPCB for manufacturing and assembling your PCBs. For this project, I'll be using the Raspberry Pi 4, a blank microSD card, the Raspberry Pi official 7-inch touchscreen display, as well as a protective case to hold both the Pi and the screen. I'll of course use some additional hardware so that I can assemble and connect everything together. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. My absolute favorite way for displaying anything on a screen that's connected to the Raspberry Pi is by using Full Page OS. I'll go ahead and download the latest image, connect the micro SD card to the USB port of my computer, and as I've shown before, flash the downloaded image to the SD card. This process is no different than if I were setting up Raspbian as I've shown in another video. After a few minutes, once the image finished flashing, we'll want to modify a couple of text files. We'll want to edit the file name full page OS WPA supplicant, which contains the network credentials so that the operating system can connect to our local Wi-Fi as soon as it boots up. I'll also change the country setting to match my own. One more change I'll make is in the config file. I'll set the LCD rotate parameter to 2 so that the screen displays the image with the right side up. With those changes in place, I can go ahead and eject the SD card and move on to assembling the hardware. This is a very straightforward process that you're welcome to follow along or skip ahead to get on with the rest of the video. Once we've assembled the hardware and connected power to the Pi, the full page OS should run immediately. After a short boot up time, we'll be able to see the welcome screen of the operating system. Displaying our own web page is pretty straightforward as well. I'll go ahead and log in remotely using SSH from my computer. And if you're unfamiliar with how to do this, I have a couple of videos where I explain it in more detail. Once I'm logged in, I'm able to see the default scripts that come with the operating system. We'll be using one of them later so that we can refresh the screen periodically. For serving the web page, Full Page OS uses Lite HTTPD as its default web server. I can request any of the default web pages by using the web browser running on my MacBook. 
In order to change the page that's displayed, I'll start by navigating into the HTML directory, making a directory of my own that I'll call test, and adding my own index.html file. Now if I add the name of the directory as the URL path, I'll be able to see the page I created. If I want to display the page on the screen itself, I'll need to modify the full page OS text file inside the boot directory. Now when I reboot, the page I just created is the one that'll be displayed on the screen. So now I can move on to display a data visualization page that I've been working on over the past few days. I'll clone my demos repository for the Raspberry Pi and move the COVID-19 demo to the HTML subdirectory. This is an example for visualizing data on a web page. The first part of it is using a Python script to gather the data from an online API. The API provides a useful way to query the data reported by the Center for System Science and Engineering at John Hopkins University. The data is both publicly available and has also been published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. The online API returns the reported data in JSON format. But instead of querying the API every time I want to display data on the page, I use the Python script to download it locally. It goes back to the first day when data became available up to the time that the script was run. If the data is already available locally, it doesn't query the API, but if it isn't, then it goes ahead and fetches it. Because the API doesn't report the number of cases reported by a country for a particular day, I have to do additional processing. You're welcome to go over the script and ask me any questions if you have them. I'll go ahead and run the script so I can gather the data. And if I go back to the browser running on my MacBook, I can point it to the directory and look at the included web page. I'll spare you of the nitty gritty details of what's going on behind the scenes, but I will give an overview. I'm using the Bootstrap CSS framework for the styling and the Google Charts API for creating the graph that you see. In the body of the page, I have the HTML elements that contain the information and the data is filled in dynamically using JavaScript. The plot is created inside a function that I named generate plots using the line charts plot from the Google Charts API. In order to give the data to the plot, I use an AJAX request that's sent to the web server running on the Pi. The request goes to the getDataPHP script that I've written and whose contents are very straightforward. It simply reads the text file that the Python script created and returns it to the client making the request. Now if I want this page to be displayed when the system boots up, I'll have to go back and modify the full page OS file once again. Now when the system boots up, I should be able to see the changes. What's great about using a web page is that the touch capabilities are already built in. So with everything working, the last two things I'll want to do are making sure that the data is fetched on a daily basis and refreshing the page every five minutes or so to make it a little more interactive. To do that, I'll edit the operating system scheduler that is called cron by using the cron tab utility. I'll add two entries to it, one for running the Python script every day at midnight and the other for running the script I mentioned in our home directory. This will refresh the page periodically, which makes the system just slightly more interactive. With those changes in place, I don't even need to reboot the system to see them in action. For example, I can wait five minutes and see that the screen refreshes all by itself. So there you have it. I've shown you my preferred way to have a Raspberry Pi displaying data on any screen that's connected to it. And as an example, I've used it to visualize the data for the number of cases reported for the country I live in during this worldwide epidemic. 
Please remember the basic things, stay home if you can, wash your hands for longer than 20 seconds, and resist the urge to come in close contact with the elderly. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.